Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, we're dealing with some more wacky weather, but welcome to our Sunday mm, coffee with Conti show. My name is Rick. I'm into my 29th year representing new and used Corvettes, and I gotta tell you, it's still a thrill. It's an honor. I love sharing our experiences together around this car. And I've talked about in recent videos how sold orders for customers are coming in and they're not taking delivery. We call those back out deals. Why is that? I believe every car has a story. We're gonna share some of those with you today on the show. Thanks for joining us. We also have a couple of send off pass as well. And by the way, John in Ohio, thank you for the Tim Hortons $100 gift card. You're quite a guy. And part of the stories we're gonna talk about today is yours because that car right there was in fact yours. This thing is, thing's awesome, man. It really is. For Bruce and Cynthia in the state of Oregon. We're also going to talk some logistics today. I've talked about before when we have a back out deal. Not a big deal. It's a blessing in disguise. But in the big picture of things, there actually could be allocation implications and it could hurt us. I'll give you the details in just a moment. So as you guys heard me say at the beginning of the show, every car has a story. This car has a story. It's a little interesting. It ends up well for Bruce and Cynthia in Oregon. It was ordered for John in Ohio. He wasn't quite sure if he wanted the 2024 Corvette. We took the pre-order. We took his information. We entered in the order. He was still kind of out of the bubble. He goes, hey, I may want to do Z06. I might wait for 2025. Well, the GM ordering system, sometimes when they need stuff, they scan the dealer's preliminary orders, sold orders only. Only, and they went snatch and grabbed a couple of orders. We didn't have an opportunity to confer with our customers. Do you still want this car? Do you want to change anything on the car? They sent these suckers right to production control. We had no way of getting them back. That's a good thing, but sometimes you're like, well, then why put the order in? Well, you put the order in so you price protect the customer in the event something like that happens. But I just don't agree with Chevrolet grabbing those orders for their benefit, not for us or our customers, and put us in a situation. So I told John, not a big deal. We'll let the car just show up and we'll sell it. And we sold it to Bruce and Cynthia. Yes, a blessing in disguise. And John John actually came down when the car came in. He goes, at least let me come and take a look at it. He's like, oh my goodness. Yeah, this is my spec. I, oh, I want it so bad. No. I'm gonna wait, he's gonna wait for possibly a 25Z06 or something of that nature. Uh, what a nice man, wrote me a very nice letter. Thank you, John. What a, what a gentleman sent me a $100 gift card for Tim Hortons. This wasn't his fault, he didn't have to do that, but thank you, I do appreciate that. So here's where the allocation implications can hurt us. Chevrolet looks and prioritizes sold orders differently than they do stock orders. If we have, and we're on the bubble, I said there's just, and we're gonna talk more about some other reasons why some of these orders backed out this is just one of them yes technically a back out but again because the computer system pulled it john wasn't ready i wasn't ready but you know boom here it is anyways chevrolet has a system in place that if we order too many sold orders and they don't go to the original customer in which they were ordered for well they could and i've seen it happen in the past where they shut down the ability for us to enter a sold order for a particular client and that could hurt us too going forward. So yes, it is a blessing in disguise, but I gotta watch out for the implications. If this happens too much, uh, we can get handcuffed and not be able to enter a sold order for a client, museum delivery, specific options that you need. Sometimes it's uh, combo override, color combo override that you need. The sold order capability in order to do that we could lose that ability if this the snowball thing that is as rolling continues and gets bigger so we got to slow down a little bit i think we're about to turn the corner anyways and be ordering cars for customers that want that special opportunity but i think we're also getting ready to order cars for stock as well and i'm looking forward to that and uh really having fun with you guys specking out your corvette Aww. all right time for a send-off pat yeah that's one of many stories that i have over the 29 years of representing corvette a forced pulled order from Chevrolet, botched order. John says, no, I don't want it. And I said, that's okay. Bruce and Cynthia in Oregon, they said, yeah, I'll take it. He just, he just, he just put his head on top of the car. Yeah. <laughs> what the? 
I gotta get a picture of that. <laughs> Wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it myself. Okay, um, anyways, yeah, send off Pat. Make it fun, make it official. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce and Cynthia. Send off Pat on your 2024 hardtop convertible. It is a Z51, they do have wings and we are gonna rub it for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for the business. Really appreciate working with you guys. I know it's the number one color, but come on, man. There's something to be said about a red Corvette. Man, this looks good. Body color accents too, I like that a lot. You're good. Guys, thank you again for watching today. Gonna make this just a little bit shorter show than normal. That way you can enjoy your Sunday and I got time to prepare for a Tech Tuesday this coming Tuesday with Chuck and myself. Oh, I'm sorry, am I Am I in the way? Brian in New York, he's like, hey, wait a minute. Hey, hey man, is that my car back there? Is that, is that my Z06? Yes, it is. That's all for now. <laughs> I love it when you guys are watching the channel and you're like, Rick, man, can you move? I know you're talking to the screen. Rick, move. I think that's my car when you're walking around on the lot. Yeah, that's Brian from New York's Z06. <laughs> and I know, I know Brian's buddies are watching the channel. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that very much. Now step back just a little bit. Yeah, more Brian's Z06. You'll get a chance to meet him in person. I can't wait to meet him and share him with you guys right here on the channel. This is so much fun being a part of this, like I said. Guys, thanks again for joining us today. I really enjoy sharing and talking about Corvette anytime I can. Real quick, before we finish up and talk about the market conditions and why some of these orders are backing out, uh, I almost bought something over the weekend. I actually was bidding on it. I told you guys a long time ago, if you know, I am a huge, still, 98 pace car fan. And I know some people are like, oh God, Rick, are you kidding me? That's the ugliest Corvette ever. Yeah, well, I love it, it's cool. I had a chance years ago for my buddy Sam in New York to buy the 98 pace car, very well cared for, and a brand new, in the box, never driven, fiberglass, 98 pace car go-kart look at this thing all the, i forget who it was i apologize thank you for sending me the auction they emailed me and said hey rick look at this this might be a chance for you to get a pace car so i started bidding on this go-kart that was down in kentucky i figured okay i'm gonna go to maybe 2500 dollars what do you guys think that thing sold for you saw a little bit there on the screen i was in a little bit of a bidding war I thought maybe max 3,000 it would sell for, but I was out of 2,500, I was done, that was, that was it. And then I thought, well, if I get this, where am I gonna put it, what am I gonna do with it? I, <laughs> I don't know, I just, I'm a nut and I can't, I can't get out of my own way. So <laughs> anyways, the auction finished at $4,500 and it went to Corvette Lady. Congratulations. I don't know what she's gonna do with it, but 4,500 bucks, that's more than I think it costs new. Couple of more things I wanna talk about today are those back out situations we referred to earlier. New orders that come in and don't go to the original customer that ordered it. Like we talked about earlier, the allocation implications from a business standpoint that affects us and doesn't give us the opportunities to help many people that are waiting to get allocations. We hope it doesn't come to that. That's why we gotta kinda of put a stop to this back outs of sold orders that are for you. There's a lot of people that are seeing some of these videos and they've reached out to me. They said, hey Rick, I seen you got a bunch of back outs lately. You know, I'm on the list waiting. I'd like to have had one of those spots and had my car right now. I totally get it. Now, what are some of the other situations that generate these back out orders? It could be a job situation. Maybe your job changes and all of a sudden, financially, you're not in a position to get the Corvette. I totally get that. And another situation, it's, it's sad and it's unfortunate, but it is the reality that we live in health issues all of a sudden pop up and you're not in a position, you're trying to trying to save your life, you're not in a position to get a Corvette. I know there's other thoughts on that, but right now you have to respect the people that say, you know, I've got to focus on this rather than this. We totally get that. That's why sometimes these cars are backed out.
And here's one of the big things that are happening right now that's happened several times and why we've got a couple of cars in stock, and that is trade values. It's hard for us, it's not fair to us or you as a customer to give you a trade value in advance when you first order the car. You've seen, we've talked about it endlessly, the inconsistencies on arrival of cars. I'll give you an instance. We ordered uh, a couple of cars back in September, October. They are just finally getting built in March. How do you give a trade value back then and hold that to something that you don't have a clue when the car's going to arrive? So we try to assess that a little bit more in real time. But you, however, have these expectations of what your trade is worth. Let me, <laughs> sorry, I gotta be silly one more time. Let me milk the uh, Travis Kelsey thing from the Super Bowl one more time. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, your trades are no longer worth sticker anymore. The market is settling down and, and coming into a little bit of normalcy. I mean, you've got almost five model years of cars in the marketplace. And we put these in and we try to be very fair. We're not the lowest guy, we're not gonna be the highest guy. We're gonna come right in between. We do a lot of research before we give you that trade value, but yet it still doesn't meet the expectations that you have or the budget expectations that you have and the deal can't go forward. So that's why some of these cars backed out. And I totally respect that guys. But again, it, it being fair to you, fair to me, fair to the dealership, it, it's so hard to commit to a trade value that far in advance. And then when the car comes in, you guys are using sources that aren't check writers and you have expectations of that number and it doesn't shake out that way. We do apologize. Again, we're not the lowest, we're not the highest, but we're gonna be, we're gonna be fair. Many times over, when you're trading, you get a tax credit and that's an added value to your deal. But right now we've had some deals that have fell apart and it's a bummer. It's not what I wanted to tell these clients, but I do respect their budget. You have to move them forward and maybe things will change a little bit and be in their favor. We have an opportunity in the future to do business once again. Okay, Brian, there's your, <laughs> there's your car. He's like, come on, man, move. My car's back there, I know. It is so much fun broadcasting to you guys, doing business with you guys. I really do appreciate all the support, the understanding, and the memories that we're creating together and that we're sharing right here on the channel. Tuesday night for Tech Tuesday, one of the questions I'm gonna to present to you guys uh, came to me from my customer, Chris in Kentucky. He's got the factory dual stripes. Good question too. If you PPF over those stripes, do you have to worry about when you take the PP off, maybe one, two, three, four years down the road, does it hurt the factory stripes? Very good question. Thank you again, Chris, I appreciate that. We'll have an answer for that and a few more of your emails and then we'll finish up with your beautiful ride segment. Last Sunday on the channel, that was like we like to do to get you, like today. You guys, this will spawn several conversations and probably other channels to make videos based on what we talked about today. But last Sunday, we talked about the potential, very real potential of a Corvette SUV coming. We had over 300 comments. Thank you again, you guys, for the engagement. Support this channel, continue to do that. Thumbs up this video, subscribe and hit the bell notification. Make comments down below. I love hearing from you guys. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.